Well, thanks for staying with us. A beat of drama took place in the House of Representatives when the minority leader Ndudi Elumilu urged the House to demand resignation or sack of the Minister of Communications and Digital Economy, Isa Pantami, for want backing activities of jihadist leaders and deadly Islamic sect. The Speaker, Femi Bajabemila, however, overruled the minority leader, a leader, noting that the matter being raised had nothing to do with his privilege as a lawmaker. Uh, joining us to discuss this is a political analyst Achike Chude. Many thanks uh, for staying with us, uh, Mr. Chude. Yeah, thank you. It's a pleasure. All right, uh, let's get your candid uh, opinion concerning this particular issue. It has the media, uh, of course, uh, the media space has been agog with calls uh, for the Minister of Communications and Digital Economies um, resignation. Uh, with what happened at the Senate yesterday, uh, what exactly are your thoughts? Uh, sorry, the House of Reps, rather. Well, um, I, I think that um, you know what we have. We have. We are used to uh, seeing the situation, you know, seeing situations where it would appear that um, the representatives of the people do not give uh, matters of uh, fundamental interest to the people, where it appears they do not give the, the kind of attention that it needs. Obviously, what is going on today in the country is something that um, has caught the imagination of a lot of Nigerians. And you see activities on social media. You see Nigerians are winning on it. And you will think that um, when the matter gets to this level where um, a large majority of uh, the population um, feels strongly about a particular issue, such as what we have on ground, that that kind of uh, sentiment, general sentiment across board would persuade uh, our political leadership to move in a particular direction. Uh, but it appears that um, that is not the case. Uh, and that's why we saw what happened at uh, the House of uh, Representatives, where the Speaker tried to, I mean, everything in his power to ensure that um, uh, the matter that was brought up by Lumelu was not uh, given uh, the kind of attention by the National, by the House of Representatives, that I believe the matter as worthy as this should have gotten. So it, it's unfortunate, like, like, like you have said, um, everybody, this is something everybody is talking about. This is something that is on the minds of everybody. A lot of, um, I mean, so what uh, Plus TV is doing right now, focusing on it, is something that um, a lot of other media houses too have also been doing, uh, pointing attention to something that uh, the media believes is of importance to the people, and the people themselves have shown it in so many ways that this matter is important and should not be swept under the carpet. So we'll get back to you now, Mr. Achude. Let's uh, bring in our other panelists into this conversation. Uh, good evening. Many thanks for joining us, Dr. Sheto Olu. Uh, does it really, uh, you know, bother you uh, that uh, there was a Federal Executive Council meeting yesterday and, of course, uh, Nigerians uh, have been talking about this particular issue for a while right now, that is the call for the resignation of the minister. And that uh, when... Uh, uh, the Minister of Information was asked about uh, the discussion. If it was discussed at FED, he just said it was not discussed. What does all of this portend? Well, uh, I'm not... I, I'm not bothered. Why, why should I be bothered? Why should I be bothered with a government that has shown incompetence, has shown insensitivity to the grievances and, and the, the grievances of Nigerian people? Why should I be bothered by a government that's shown to be nonchalant and, and lack of ethical, you know, to the agitations of Nigerian people? It, you know, uh, it's obvious that the government has its preferences, you know, and it, it has chosen its preference. It, it, if I may ask, it's rare to find a state official resigning government. Why are we asking for a rarity in Nigeria? Except there's a new political order. I do not expect it in this order. All right, thank you for your thoughts. Uh, let's uh, continue with this particular conversation right now. A lot of Nigerians have been talking about um, the screening process uh, of uh, ministers and, of course, other appointees in Nigeria. What does this really tell of uh, our security apparatus that the DSS that should have done for a screening, in as much as we heard that uh, this uh, screening was done and it was overlooked? And, of course, the Senate, what does it really tell about um, appointment into you know, political offices in Nigeria? You know, we should not conclude 
that the state security service did not do due, due, due diligence. Mm. What, what if the state security apparatus uh, had information about him, uh, about his link to terrorist organizations, etc., which probably could have been submitted to the state? What if the state and then the executive organ did not act about it? What if the state didn't consider it uh, sufficient enough to drop him for a particular appointment? So it is neither here nor there. We're not sure if the state security service did due diligence or not. It's not impossible state security service did due diligence. It's not impossible that state officials uh, chose to neglect those findings. It's not impossible. It's been speculated too. But concerning the National Assembly, the, the process of um, ratifying appointees of the president it has become a charm and it's a charade of course. It's become a comedy in Nigeria. It, 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 when you compare it to the American experience, it's, 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 it's not a serious business. The, 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 the process should, should show rigor and there should be free interview, investigation, a kind of profiling on, on the candidates about their backgrounds, about their demeanor and misdemeanor, about their about the family background, the role politically, and, and uh, security reports about such individuals, etc. You know, we, what, we, what we had witnessed in several screenings uh, are child's place. They, 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 they do not show seriousness. And the National Assembly, the Senate and National Assembly, do not give the impression that we show us about a country. The legislature is not shown to be pro people. Is not shown to be pro Nigerians. And is, is the National Assembly is not shown to be committed to protecting the integrity of the Nigerian state. The process, if you ask me, has been a sham. All right, thank you, Dr. Sheto Olu. Uh, back to you now, our analyst, uh, Ajik Chude. Let's talk about uh, the moral thing to do here, you know, in as much as the, there's been so much, uh, you know, uh, shout about this on social media, and of course, almost every discourse around Nigerians, uh, another uh, school of thought believes that uh, it is irrational to be calling for uh, uh, his um, resignation. But looking at it, what's the moral thing to really do in the, in the sense that uh, he holds, uh, you know, such a crit critical and sensitive position in Nigeria, where, you know, anyone could actually be at risk, you know, right now. What is the moral thing, you know, for the minister to do in yeah, the wake yeah. of all of these calls? Yeah, yeah, if, if you allow me, yes, thank you. If you allow me, I will just briefly, you know, touch on uh, the last question you asked, which uh, my good friend here, Dr. Shetolu, has Go ahead. adequately also, Go ahead. you know, talked about, and that is the issue of, um, uh, the issue of uh, nomination and the screening mm. of uh, candidates uh, for, uh, you know, um, uh, appointments uh, in, in, into the government. Uh, the reality is that in Nigeria, politics trumps uh, uh, common sense. Politics trumps reason. Parochialism drives a lot of things within the polity. And so that is why we see the kind of result that we're seeing today. And, you know, uh, uh, Dr. Patami is not the only one. There are so many other things that have been swept under the carpet, uh, you know, on the basis of spinning of some of these people. Of course, we have known also that, uh, that the, when it comes to the uh, issue of screening, we, in the past we have seen that the uh, pecuniary interest motivations also drive some of these uh, screening processes. Corruption is so, you know, also, I mean, driving some of the screening and the results of the screenings that we have seen. And so this is also a symptom of uh, the disease that we have also been facing in the country. Uh, you know, so that, that, is, that is at that level. Uh, mm -hmm. Just like Dr. Sheton said, there is every indication or a possibility that the DSS has done its job. But we know how these things go. Ultimately, it is political decisions, not common sense, not the need for service that determines you know, how, whether this will scale through the National Assembly or not. Now, talking about the moral, you know, what should be the moral disposition of the uh, Patami, I think the issues are very clear. First of all, when this matter broke, he denied it strenuously. He said it was a lie. It was only on the strength of facts that emerged the video evidence and audio evidence that emerged of what he had already denied that he reluctantly accepted what he had done and now gave reasons why he did it that he was a very young person. The four-year-old person is not a young person who was holding court, you know, 
uh, uh, and then spewing fundamental or extremist views, religious views. It's not, I mean, from the mouth of a 34 year old person. It's an adult. You become an adult when you attain the age of 18 years. And then it's almost his age, then was almost double that of 18 years. So he knew exactly what he was doing. But the reality or, or the situation or the, really is this he says he's sorry and that he has, uh, he, 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 you know, stepped aside or stepped back from the disposition that he had when he was much younger. But the reality is that repentance is not something that, 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 that I mean, a man says he repents of something and then you're not exactly sure whether he has actually repented. He's holding a very key position in this country, a very sensitive position in, in Nigeria. And then we have had instances where it has been indicated that people who are not of Nigerian birth, or who are not Nigerian citizens, have obtained national identity cards of you know, the Federal Republic of Nigeria. So, and then in the midst of this insurgency, uh, to which he has, at a younger age, according to him, shown some kind of loyalty to, uh, you, you know, you cannot accept, you know, uh, 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 you cannot, I, I think it will be foolhardy for Nigerians to accept the statements of regret uh, with regards to maybe his repentance. The position is too sensitive. And, 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 and so I think that the honorable thing for him to do is to resign that position. I, I believe very strongly. But then the issue, just like uh, Dr. Shetelu has said, is who are the people driving the country? What is their sense of patriotism and their sense of duty, responsibility, and obligation to the Nigerian state? The fact that we are where we are is really, I mean, as a result of the failure of governance. And governance, you know, as a result of the disposition of the, of the activities of the political elites in this country, who have shown in so many ways that they are not exactly interested in the welfare and interest of, of Nigerians. So for, I, I one would have expected that at this particular point in time, a lot of politicians, especially those in government, this president most especially, would have done everything to distance right. himself from somebody like, you know, Dr. Patami. Right. This is what is expected of the president. And uh, because mainly, uh, lastly, as a result of all the speculations and the suspicions surrounding even the disposition of the president, uh, you know, it, it, with regards to either the, the, the headsmen, uh, a lot of Nigerians have often accused him of being sympathetic to them. Even the insurgency, if you remember at a particular point in time, Boko Haram had some years back, you know, touted the president to be their representative in the possibility, whenever, uh, the, uh, you know, a dialogue them because people are muting the possibility of a of, of negotiation between you know Boko Haram and then the Nigerian state at a particular point in time, and the right. president was touted then to be the representative or you know of Boko Haram at that particular point in time. It was about a week later that the president associated himself with the group. So the the impression people have about the president is not good. It gives the but this situation gives the president an opportunity to dissociate himself from Patami by making sure that Patami, he gets Patami to resign, and if he refuses to resign, to kick him out of, out of office. Right. This is what is expected of the president at okay. this particular point in time. All right, thank you so much. I'm Achi Trudy for your thoughts. Uh, we do appreciate it. Let's get uh, final words now from Dr. Shetolu as we round off uh, this particular discourse. Uh, with all of this now, what is the way forward, and what does it really tell on the fight against insurgency and terrorism in Nigeria? Well, uh, if you ask me, I, I do not expect Dr. Patton to resign. He's not been the pattern. It's rare that state officials resign. They are recorded that the former secretary was accused of corrupt practices, you know, resigned. But it's still rare. Um, well, uh, the, 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 the fight against uh, terrorism, insurgency, etc., has been uncoordinated. Has, has been unscientific. And if you ask me, the government is failing in this respect. Uh, more, more so, when, when, when the, the utterances, you know, the utterances and actions of, of the sitting cabinet minister is suggesting that there are, there are, that the individuals in the cabinet who sympathetic, you know, to, to insurgents and terrorist organizations. And this presupposes that. Uh, that the, the terrorist organization, the terrorist groups and insurgent groups may actually be penetrating, you know, the state authority, uh, which, which, which is unfortunate, or which will be unfortunate if, if this happens. Well, uh, you, you, the, the moral, 
you, you, had, you had that question earlier about the morality, mm. you know, of the issue. Well, you recall that politics in Nigeria is really based on morality. That's really a moral question about political actions, about political decisions or indecisions in Nigeria, you know. And the state officials are really posing, you know, the moral or ethical question, right. you know. It's, it's the, the, the question about morality is rather utopia in Nigeria. We're not there yet. Okay. I, I, I wish that the minister, in the light of the evidences, you know, and the mountain agitations and pressures, to quit the office. All right, thank you. One, to dance political pension, and two, you know, two, to, 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 show, to show that he's, he's, he's so pretty about his authority. Right. But when he continues to stay in office, he will be a security threat. He will be a security threat. And most of when the evidences are huge, mm. you know, the, the, I'll conclude on this note. The, All right, the, All right. go the ahead, in, in, in a few seconds, against please. insurgency, uh, kidnapping, banditry, etc. You know, has been has been lopsided, and, and it's not shown that state officials are, are, are well informed about how to go about, you know, proceeding, waging the struggle, and how to contain the insurgents. If you ask me, the state officials appear to be short of ideas. All right, they appear to be short of ideas. And Nigeria is at the crossroads. All right, thank you so I'm much for your thoughts. Nigeria is very fragmented, mm. and Nigeria is on the verge of assuming a collapsing state. All right, thank I'm you, Dr. Sheto, Look for your thoughts. We do appreciate it. Uh, indeed, uh, we've been talking about the fight against insurgency and terrorism vis-a-vis -vis the wake, uh, the call for the resignation of the Minister of um, Digital Economy and, of course, Communications, Isa Pantemi, and our guests have been uh, Dr. Sheto Lu and, of course, uh, Achike Chude. Thank you so much, gentlemen, once again. Thank you. Good evening. All right, we'll take a short break and when we return, I'll be giving my take. On external borrowings, government should focus on providing social services such as education, healthcare, security, among others, with the resources at its disposal while creating the right environment for the private sector to engage in businesses such as agriculture, industries, and transportation. And the external borrowing uh, social services such as education, health care, security, among others, with the resources at its disposal. Uh, those are my thoughts for today. I am Justin Academy Plus Politics. Uh, returns again tomorrow. <laughs>